strange world that we live in. You can't wait every weekend. It's like your own little tribe. The success that Joey and Merv and Frank brought to the village and set the place alight in the 70s just with the antics and the racing. They were held in the same regard as, like, superstars, film stars. When you're a motorbike racer in them days, you are something a wee bit special. Having filmed for many years, quickly realised that this was going to be an outstanding race course. Needless to say, it's the world's best circuit, in my opinion. It's a course based solely on faith. It's all blind corners and you jump in mid-air. Oh, you are close to the action here, it's just... Oh, yeah, well, you, you can give a five to the right. Yeah, <laughs> it's just an action. Uh, it's incredible. It's been yeah. on my bucket list for years, isn't yeah. it? It is about as extreme as road racing gets this. It's an, it's an awful track. I still feel the pressure. You know that you're standing young men out there and girls out there and fast bikes. You just hope it ever be just it's really safe. I'm not blowing smoke at my own backside, but let's see Michael Dunlop do that. My name's Dominic Herbertson, I'm 26. I'm a road racer and I'm a forester to fund being a road racer. I got into it because my me, me dad's got into it and I look, you know, I look up to my dad a lot. You know, he's got a lot to teach us and he's taught me a lot. But if I shut up and listen now and then, because instead of talking all the time, I'd learn a lot more. My dad races as well, you know, and I, I've been brought up with racing all my life. Um, from being such a young lad, is he raised his whole family in the paddock, really, and I think there's no better place than the paddock, especially when you go to Ireland. I think it feels that feels like home to me. And same with the team, you know, the WH Racing team. You know, you turn up and everyone is there to help each other out, and you're in a field covered in crap, <laughs> up to the eyeballs. You, you know, you're going down to the start line, and everyone's having a good chat on, covered in mud, and you're thinking, this is this is where I want to be. I can't wait to get there now. I know I'm felling trees at the moment, but I just want to pack up, get in the van and go straight to Armour. I can't wait. <laughs> great place, great beer, good crack. How can you ask for more? <laughs> for almost half a century, this quiet county Antrim village has been one of the spiritual homes of motorcycle road racing. And since 2009, competitors and fans have travelled from everywhere to the annual Armoy Road Races. And they go in there, they either turn them and send them away, or they'll tell them to go straight on up that hill there, and, and they'll be safe. It's 8 a.m. on the opening day. Bill Kennedy is the clerk of the course. As well as running his own garage business, over the next 36 hours, he will be responsible for the safety of hundreds of racers and volunteers, and around 20,000 spectators. Public roads are closed, and the police had Bill authority for everything that happens. The route closing order states that it will uh, close today at 12.30 and uh, be open no later than, than 9 o'clock. So come 12.30, we send the car in and that's it. That's all it is. So the police will say, right, well, it's all yours. Your show now. Pressure's off when the road's closed, believe it or not. I know it's, it's a lot of pressure when the riders go out there and just hoping that everything goes well for them and that they're safe but you want to make sure that everything's ready for them before uh, they do go out. So whenever the roads are closed, it's signed off by the steward for the meeting, I'm happy then. I honestly would say that uh, it's 11 months of the year. You get a break now after the race is over and already the, the letters are in looking for the dates for 2018. It just don't, just don't stop. How do you think the Armoy Armada would feel? I do believe they would have been extremely proud, but I would think if they were here today just to see what's happening in Armoy, uh, you know, they would, they would be flabbergasted. They would think this is unbelievable, what, what's happened in Armoy. And, and I suppose to a, a, an extent it was, they were the guys that started all this carry on, and it's still going on. Bill's late brother, Frank, was one of the fabled Armoy Armada. Four motorbike men whose swagger, style and success on the roads in the late 70s really captured the hearts of everyone in the area and beyond. The three original members of the Armada, Joey Dunlop, Frank Kennedy and Mervyn Robinson, all paid the ultimate price for their road racing obsession. But their mystique and their legacy has never been more alive. In Armoy at the time, they were the local heroes. 
People may have seen them as something special and on a pedestal, but they all were very grounded people. I found the years younger than Joey was, so he started and then we all sort of followed him to the, all the road races and that was sort of in the blood. We were never a failure riding an old bike. Then whenever I started racing, then you were away every weekend. If you weren't at short you you're at a road race. It's a great privilege to even to know them and, and to help them. It's unbelievable how three people from a wee village later in Moy that could be so good. You know, they're really, really talented. And, and apart from them, the good motorbike racers, they're great mechanics. They're able to fix their own bikes. Two of the Armoy Armada had their workshops in the village of Armoy, and they would be getting their bikes ready for the Saturday race, which very often involved stripping down the engine and rebuilding it. Having done that, before a race, you have to run in the engine. And the easiest way to run the engine in was just to take the bike out on the public roads in the twilight and run up and down as fast as you can until the engine was run in. And that's exactly what they did. It was a tradition there, Moy. The police never bought ways, and the police knew we did it. It was great days back then, you know, in the garage up in Armoy where we lived, uh, working at the bikes and ginning at the bikes and no money, but uh, just full of enthusiasm and passion for racing, and they managed to, to get there and became very successful. Of course, they've inspired another generation. They inspired, I suppose, the, the inception of the Armway Road Races. They're still writing the chapters yet. That's 45 years on. After nearly 50 years of triumph and tragedy, the hold that road racing has over the families of this area is all-consuming. Even those most closely affected by its toll can't help being involved. This is my 24th season. I um, started just doing clubman's races in the short circuits. I was never really going to get into the road racing scene just with uh, my dad being killed in the racing. But when the, start, the short circuits over here started to get very few and far between, I think you maybe had about three, four, five races in the year, it got to a stage where you got to do something else or else pack it in. The memories I have of my, my dad racing, I saw how much he enjoyed it. I've obviously got the bug of racing from my dad. Started road racing last year. I raced short circuits a long time ago. I had the urge to do it then, but I would only have done it at my own pace, and to be fair, I don't think I was getting that chance. Everybody wanted to see the son of Joey Dunlop out in the roads ASAP, and I'm the type of guy that whenever I feel as if I'm being pushed to do something, I, I kick back a bit, and that's that was probably the, the reason I finished racing completely at that time. But I feel good now. It's it's far more relaxed. There's no expectations in my shoulders. I run my own bikes here. I can I can do what I want. I, I get great help from William and and uh, Paul, and basically everybody in the paddock looks after me really well. You fix that bit. The chances are Max will probably be pretty interested in starting to race, you know, but I'd, I'd really much prefer he wasn't. Um, I'd rather send him down the footballing road because it's a bit cheaper and it's a lot less dangerous, but if he ever does decide that he wants to go racing, like, I'll, I'll help him to the best I can help him um, and see how it goes from there because I know my own parents, mother and stepfather, didn't want me racing, but whenever I made the decision, it was my decision and they helped me as much as possibly could be, uh, both uh, financially and emotionally. So they've been very good to me and supported me, so I'd do the same for my ex. I hear the, the phrase all the time, it's in the blood. It's something that I don't like hearing it. I don't believe in it that way. My brother's the same as me. He's grew up around bikes and stuff, and he has no interest in them whatsoever, and I'm pretty mad about them. It's a social thing, it's, as I say, all my friends are at racing. The, there's people at the race who looks after me like a son. It's, you can't wait every weekend, it's like your own little tribe. You just pack up in your van and car van and head away and it's the same people, it's the same faces. and It's a great atmosphere, it's, it's a great society to be in. Now, the Armway races for us are a wee bit special. It's just, it's local, it's to do with Armway Armada and sort of the family tradition of the Armway Armada. It's sort of a special wee race for us, you know. It puts its own added pressure on, but 
the local spectators are all there, the boys you're on about with over the weekends and stuff, so that puts its own wee bit of pressure. You sort of don't want to look bad in front of them, so it gives you a wee incentive. You know, it's not so much pressure, it just puts that wee incentive to do a wee bit better than normal. They always talked about they would love to run a road race in, in, in Armoy. Everyone always said it would never happen. And then uh, I was approached by Kathleen Harton, a lady, and, and somebody had put a bet on her that never could happen. She says, I'm, I'm determined that they're going to have a race. And she says, I want you to be at the front of it, for she says, I don't think anybody else in Armoy would be able to do it. I says, I don't want to be involved in it. I've done everything to get out of it. And then to finish up, I said, look, I'll tell you what, we'll get a club going. I'll stay with you for a year, maybe a couple of years, and then let you carry on. But I found <laughs> to my cost that it's almost imp impossible to get out of these positions once you get into them. When Bill Kennedy rang me and said, would I bring up my camera and equipment to cover the 2009 race, I was very excited because I realized the enormous history that lay behind having a race at Armoy. And after so many years, we were going to see racing on the very same roads that the Armoy Armada had practiced on in the 1970s. From day one, they went out and they got the big name riders, like Guy Martin, to come to Armoy. And that brought in the crowds. And there was a totally wonderful atmosphere. And I realized immediately, this was going to be great. In the 1970s, every summer, the roads around the peaceful County Antrim village of Armoy echoed with the roar from motorbikes being tested ahead of dozens of race meetings. These days, everywhere else, road racing is struggling and many formerly glorious events have gone. But Armoy finally got its own event in 2009, and it has grown into one of the biggest national road races in the country, with one of the most celebrated circuits. The circuit itself, there's a wee bit of everything in it, you know, there's the road end, the slow corners, the fast corners, there's jumps, there's jumps on the middle of corners. Needless to say, it's the world's best circuit, in my opinion, mind, without a doubt. You know, it's a, it's a course based solely on faith. It's all blind corners and you jump in mid-air and you, you've got to have a lot of faith in your other competitors and all because you've got to be willing to land on them if you want to win. <laughs> It's pretty much motocross on tarmac, and how can you not love that? You know, it's an awesome track. Some, you know, it is about as extreme as road racing gets. The event has attracted many of the biggest names since 2009, but that last rider in particular has gone on to transcend the sport. Guy Martin was one of the riders that the Armoy Club invited to come over and race. In his interview, I think he says he loved it. Mega meeting to be involved with, you know, first time the race is run and, you know, and the, and the history behind it. You know, of, you know, the Moon Robinson enjoyed a lot and all the boys, you know, the original Amoy Armada. He just, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of an honor to be involved with it, really, and to be invited over, you know. The... He's always been good for Armoy. He's made it. He's become more famous maybe outside the bike racing, uh, but that has added to his popularity. I mean, we get loads of old ladies that come here looking for Guy Martin. They've never seen the road race before, but they all know Guy Martin and what they've seen. But he's a great character. We love him, and we let him do his own thing. And he loves coming here, and he loves the scenery. And, you know, he's just a, a brilliant fella to be have, having around your palate. In 2011, he came back, and we interviewed him over a garden gate. Oh, look at this here. It's grand, isn't it? I think they give it the same for tomorrow, don't they? It's lovely, lovely weather. Yeah, yeah, I think the cows have been talking, comparing notes with me cows. They've been keeping an eye on the job since, you know, for the last couple of years. Yeah, Terence is this man's name. And so what do they say? Who are the main um, That's Terence. for today? Terence, who is it? What was he called? Bob. Terence and Bob, yeah, these are the two boys. These are the main competition, really. Um, Terence, his um, speciality is on the small bikes, but Bob, you watch for him on the super bikes. When the riders like Guy arrive, they expect to find a racetrack. But these are public roads. The transformation takes place in the weeks leading up to the event, and everyone involved is a volunteer and a local. When we go to set a circuit up, well, especially the first time, we'll look at it, we'll assess every corner, 
every uh, bump, every jump, everything on the road, and we will know exactly where these bales are meant to go. At the end of the day, if you need the one bale in the right place, if you're going to have an incident, but we try and cover every corner, every area that we deem as dangerous. We have 217 of these around the course, three mile course. Uh, if you have these here out, we'll have full protectors out, curb protectors and a thousand small bales out as well. So as you see here tonight, uh, and we're, we're trying to work our way around. We have great support, great cooperation from the village and the people. Because I think of the history of Armoy and because they, they knew that the success that, uh, that Joey and Mervyn and Frank brought to the village. We have over 370 club members. I think the beauty of RMI itself, the structure of the whole race, Evan is all done by club members itself, uh, you know, and the whole thing is kept within. And I think that's the beauty of it, and that's the way the, the whole thing runs so, so professionally on race day, practice day on race day itself. The goal isn't perfection. The goal is to progress. So run the race, run it well. Don't run it on your own. Make sure that you race with Jesus. The support of the community extends to the local church, which is actually on the course. They even hold a biker's service the week of the event. This helps us to link with people who we wouldn't necessarily see all the time. We read from the Bible and we try to find a message that connects with the bikers in some way. Biking transcends all denominations. So although this is a Church of Ireland church, the, the people who come here will come from all faiths and possibly none, and everybody's equally welcome. Of course, that local passion for racing in Armoy now extends across the Irish Sea. The Wednesday before the event, Dominic Herbertson is running through his final preparations. What does it take to run a team like this? A lot of patience. <laughs> a lot of patience. I bet I, that's it. As far as running the team, you know, it, it's, we come together and make the decisions and that the, they are difficult each time because we, we all want to do as much racing as we can every time we go out. But sadly, it's, all, it's down to that funding. It's what we can afford, exactly, you know. Everyone else complains about having a budget each year, but we are very much pay as you go. You know what I mean? We get a bit of money, we chuck it back in the pot and we go from there. So as far as privateers go, we are, we are bottom. We are proper. We're on the rise, but we're at the bottom of the, the financial table, but we're just creeping up. It's where we are now, you know, we've, we've come together, this unit, we've all chipped in, and we work down here as much as we can together. I'm going to need what he wants. That's it, I, the castaway. Right. Being able to come to our moy, where we came last year, like, and we fell in love with the place. That was actually Holly, that was his first Irish meeting. And, well, go on, Holly, what was that like for you? You just fell in love with it. <laughs> oh, dear, I love it. I love it. Oh, my friends. <laughs> I love the after party, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting prepped to go, and we can't wait to get there without a doubt. And it's Stephen. Stephen's first time. That's the last time I wasn't allowed to come. <laughs> Going this time, like, definitely. <laughs> Oh, I will need the fridge. That's where the beer lives. Just in case we see a few vampires kicking around in the hills, we've got the steak here. Just in case things get a bit naughty, you know what I mean? Josh is packing up. you got the holy water, haven't you? That's a northern right. We best get some more holy water before we get going. You see the stains at the back of that chest? Dirty. You must get your lip, yeah. What box of shorts the same place as your last kit? And then that's what. Ah, you're dirty, boy. So we're packed up, ready to go to our moy. Have another great time. Fingers crossed for the weather. We're gonna go out and smash it, live the dream. The one thing they can never count on here is the weather. Some torrential rain on Thursday turns much of the paddock into a quagmire by the evening, just as the majority of racers and fans are arriving. 
Dominic takes shelter in the event marquee, where he and some other visiting competitors have been asked to judge the annual Miss Armoy contest. Listen, have you been here before? No. no. Ah, you're in for a treat. This place is absolutely mint, man. That's Brad, he tried to backflip it last year. And I'd like you to introduce you to our judges for this evening. Dominic Herbertson got his van stuck twice in the paddock today. Track. She knows the track. I'm sorry. Like the before. Number three knows the track. It's race day. The heavy showers overnight are playing havoc with the riders' preparations. For Gary and Paul, the mud and the wet roads are just another complication they must deal with in the never-ending struggle to get on the grid. You can't do anything by the weather. You can control everything. You can make everything as safe as you can, but whenever the rain comes down, there's, there's nothing you can do, and it puts the crowd off. It puts the marshals sitting there getting soaked to the skin. It's bad for everybody. I was sort of thinking that it was going to be a leisurely week and get ready f after fucking, but everything turned to disaster this week in the Dyna Jet, so I've only got rushed up and ready this morning, and that's us finally ready to go, so hopefully things start to feel a wee bit more relaxed now, but I doubt it. Nerves will kick in. Whenever you get to the paddock, it's sort of the nerves start to settle in, you know. Once you're on the bike, it's fine, but just beforehand, I don't really like that bit. I've wondered many a time why I keep doing it. Um, I suppose it's a way of life for me. I've, I've never known anything any different. You sort of think, if I call it a day, what would I do? I'd be sitting about at home, moping, not interested in anything. You can go and play football, but it's over in a couple of hours. You know, this takes you away for a weekend. Because he's no good at football, then. <laughs> <laughs> he's rubbish. <laughs> you hate it sometimes. I hate taking countless days off work sitting in the garage like I have this week, all week, working to from 10 in the morning to maybe, what, 12 at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, and you ask yourself, why? Why do you do it? But then whenever you get to the likes of here and you see everybody coming around and everybody's involved in it and they're chatting away, <laughs> you get your race done and everything works out nice and safe, you, you just end up smiling again and the first thing you think was the next race. So. Once you pull out on the grid and the tyre warmers are off and you're sitting there and everyone, the engines are revving, the temperature you can feel coming off the bike, at that point you've got to get the elbows out and go for it. For a laughing, smiling lad like I am, you know, I don't, I've made a race. You know what I mean? If there's someone on my left or someone on my right, you've got to beat them into the first corner and I'm all here to do that and can't wait to get going. Be safe and stay on your bike. Don't want any incidents, I don't want any red flags. I want to see you all enjoying yourselves and I want to see you all going home safe.